Hello and a warm welcome to Your Health Matters with me, Susan Mongeli. Now, Kenya has ramped up vaccination in a bid to contain the coronavirus pandemic. In fact, the president the other day said that as many as 10 million people will have been vaccinated by December this year. But, as with the rest of the world, Africa, Kenya, there's a lot of hesitancy to this vaccine. And rightly so. Why? Because the speed at which this vaccine was developed is questionable. And then there's all the misinformation out there. There are those who think that this is some public experiment being undertaken. So today we'll try and find out what this vaccine is all about, just learning about the, base, the basics so that you can make an informed decision. And to help us with that, we have Dr. Maureen Owiti, who is an obstetrician gynecologist. Join me for this and much more. Just start from the very top. What is this COVID vaccine that we're dealing with? Okay, uh, thank you so much, Susan, and that's an awesome question. Uh, a vaccine, uh, the COVID-19 vaccine, obviously, as it says, just a vaccine against the coronavirus. Uh, vaccine has vaccines have been with us for a very, very long time, and uh, we have been using vaccines for several things: measles, smallpox, tetanus, to name but a few. So it's not something new. A vaccine is something we use to help uh, prevent the person who has gotten the vaccine from either getting the disease or suffering severe uh, effects from the disease. So for coronavirus, the vaccines available, one, will minimize the probability of somebody getting um, COVID-19, but more importantly, most users of the vaccine will not suffer severe disease or die from uh, using the coronavirus vaccine. However, some few individuals, has been noted, I think there was um, on the media, mm -hmm. there was a gentleman, I think it was even a doctor, a healthcare worker from the United States, went to India, who had gotten vaccinated, but unfortunately passed on. So it's not to say that it's 100%. So the vaccines are not 100%, but if you look at uh, what percentage of the, uh, of the population is going to benefit from using the vaccine, and I think that not everybody, it's something that I would staunchly and really, really advocate that people do get vaccinated against uh, COVID-19. One of the challenges mm -hmm. we have is that it's not available for everybody at the moment. Uh, the government has decided to start with the most vulnerable populations, which are obviously the healthcare workers who are dealing with uh, people who have uh, COVID-19, and people who are out there and dealing with people, so it was our teachers, uh, our, uh, armed uh, forces, especially the police, so those are the people the government prioritized because again, we know, unfortunately, we are not producing our own vaccines. We have to import. Everybody wants to vaccinate their populations. The number of vaccines being produced is not enough to True. cover everybody at the same time. Well, President Uhuru said that by December, about they're hoping to vaccinate about 10 million people. And as a woman, of course everybody else is concerned, but as a woman, I think it's... Uh, more worrying. Why? Because we've heard, whether right or wrong, that it does affect fertility. Um, I'll just start laughing. <laughs> it has always been the same thing. Uh, they started with the tetanus vaccine. I'm um, somebody, I've gotten tetanus, both my children, I still, got, I still got pregnant. I deal with pregnant women every day. I want people, their third, fourth children, and they have never not gotten pregnant. Infertility is something, even somebody who has given birth previously may develop infertility for one reason or another. So I would like to assure uh, any user out there that there's no vaccine that will cause infertility. So let them, this is just some of what we call the anti-vaxxers um, theories. Wait, 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 change my DNA because that's also another thing. Oh my goodness. Now. It's understanding what is DNA, okay? And um, I thank God that I'm in the fertility field, okay? So I look at it, uh, we are people who do use uh, human uh, cells. We are embryologists, create embryos using uh, human cells. It's not possible to change somebody's DNA with the current knowledge available um, in the world. 
to change somebody's DNA requires a whole, whole multitude of hormones, signals, things that is the other concern. Why is it? And I'm asking from because I'm sure this is also in conversations with people. One thing people are asking: Why is it that they're forcing us to have this vaccine, and yet? The speed at which this vaccine was developed is questionable. Okay, one, nobody has been forced to get the vaccine. It is voluntary. But, yes. look, say for instance, mm. uh, you're always traveling. Already these other countries are yeah. giving, you know, they're saying there'll be passports and stuff like that. It will be a bit difficult for people to conduct business if you're not vaccinated. So in a way, you are being forced. Well, it's, a, it's an opportunity cost. You have a choice. You have a choice. You want to go somewhere. Those countries, they have people who are reasonable and understand that it's a safety issue. It is a safety issue. Do you want to uh, infect the population with coronavirus and people are dying? You've seen. What about this washing my hands and just wearing a mask? That does prevent, does it? it? it do it, I have it, to be it, vaccinated? It, we all know that those are strategies to reduce transmission, but they're not 100%. There's nothing that's 100% will stop. Um, transmission of the coronavirus. So if there are countries who value, and for me, countries who are insisting for that, value their population. There are one or two people, I don't want to use the words, they think differently mm -hmm. from the rest of us, just being polite. Uh, I would use other adjectives, but I'm on national television, <laughs> or I'm online, it's available for everybody. But I think it's wrong to misinform public and not have them do things that are going to be for the greater good of the society. This is something that's safe. We, people are dying. And I, I'm sure you have a relative who's died from coronavirus. When we could, if we could have prevented this death, this person being vaccinated, well, that's a person who should not be dead. If should I get the vaccine if I'm pregnant? Um, if I look at that question, uh, we have several bodies. Our world body for obstetricians is FIGO. FIGO is a French acronym for the International Federation of Obstetrician Gynecologists. And their position is that pregnant women can get the vaccine. In Kenya at the moment, we have not yet cascaded that. So unfortunately, our pregnant women are not able to get the vaccine at the moment. Can I get a vaccine or rather can I be vaccinated from breastfeeding? For me, anybody, who, which are the categories of people we can breastfeed? We initially started with adults because we didn't know what are the long-term effects. Uh, all around the world, there is a consensus on the major world of body health bodies. That is the World Health Organization, that is the CDC, um, that anybody above 12 should be able to get uh, the vaccine. Now, if a pregnant woman, FIGO, we have said pregnant women can get the vaccine, and that's when the baby is most vulnerable because they are inside the woman's womb. So if a pregnant woman can get the vaccine, it goes without saying that breastfeeding women should also get the vaccine. What if I'm menstruating? What business? There's no difference. It's, it's not going to change anything. You can get the vaccine. What if I have uh, suffered or I have tested positive before of COVID-19? Should I go and vaccinate? Um, more so because unfortunately, um, having had the COVID does not uh, give you long-term immunity against uh, uh, COVID uh, coronavirus. So if you've recovered, um, I would still get the vaccine. And what's this with, I'm sure you've heard, um, somebody got vaccinated, they still got infected, they got another jab, and now they're even talking about boosters, third and fourth, possibly fourth booster. I mean, how safe is this, getting vaccinated every other time? Every other time? Yeah. Well, um, if you want to get coronavirus, and it's really understanding, I'm happy for those people who've had it and survived, because it means they have maybe a slightly higher tolerance. Now, what you must remember is you don't live alone. And what we are hoping this corona vaccine is going to do is don't you want to be able to go out there, no mask, no all these crazy, crazy things. It's like you have to stay like, fortunately for us, it's just on camera, but I can't come and hug you. I, can't, I, I, I want to hug my mother. I want to hug my children. I want to hug my friends. That's how our normal human interactions are. And we're limited by this because of this coronavirus. What the vaccine is offering us is the opportunity to be able to go back to 
our normal lives. However, it will require that vast proportions of the of the population are vaccinated to up to be able for us to go go back to something like this. So it's not just about you, okay, I got better, but you live in an ecosystem. So you don't get the vaccine, you go to your grandmother, she dies because of you. Why? So a take home <laughs> would be we go get vaccinated and yes. that's safe. For me, um, coronavirus is more dangerous than the vaccine. Oh, well. <laughs> Thank you very much. I guess right now we are a bit more aware. And remember, there's a lot of information out there on the COVID-19 vaccine, some of it's not accurate. So make sure, even as you're browsing, as you're sharing, just make sure it's from a legit source. Well, make sure to share this clip uh, and follow us on social media. Until next time, bye-bye.